Well, good morning folks. It's Monday, it's 10 o'clock and I'm here for my five day week, I hope. And typically, because it's Monday morning, look at the weather after a nice weekend when it was almost warm in East Yorkshire. Almost warm, not quite, but there you go. Right, let's get that in, and that in, and that is this end finished. So let's crack on with it. Right, I'll bring you back when it's done. Bye now. Power drilled hole, put the hole punch in, get the tin snips in, and off we go. I'll bring you back in a minute. Bye now. And here's another top tip folks for scribing round, getting a parallel line round. That just works really well. Look at that. Look at that. Good, good, good. So there we go folks, that's half the tabs folded over because I can only get the the jaws of this very useful metal folding, edge folder, I can only get it on every other one, so I've folded over every other one. And I shall get some prop rivets in there, and then I shall tap the rest down and prop rivet some of them as well. Okay, off we go. Cracking ahead. Right, folks, that's that riveted on. It doesn't need everyone riveted on. I'm going to go over this with uh, aluminium tape now, inside and out, and, uh, and that'll seal all the drafts. So there we go, so I'm just going to guillotine these pieces off where I've marked it so that it's even and then uh, that's ready to fit and I'm going to go on to this one and fit that one as well. So that's next job, right, let's crack on. Right, that's that bit finished and sealed up. I'm going to move on to uh, putting this piece in the side here. So I think we could probably put that halfway down. Somewhere like that. Let's measure it up and get it in position. I'll bring you back. And there we go, folks. Had a bit of a clean up, got all the dirty marks off the tin. I think I'm going to close this with pop rivets because the self tappers are proving uh, a bit difficult. This is very thin metal uh, and it's, they're not holding. With, so, without I put clips on, which is a lot of faffing about. I can just drill the pop rivets out if I need to be into it. But I'm not going to pop rivet it up yet I'm, until I've tested it uh, to make sure I've got no leaks, of course. But there we are, that's the side vent on, temperature gauge on, the uh, end nozzle on. So next is the, uh, the fan underneath, the fan vent. So I'm going to get on with that now, put that on. Here we go. is making the frame that goes around the uh, the big fan. I want a frame on the inside with uh, bolts welded through so that it's easy to fit and take off. And once again the Manchester Rapid Hall does all the work. Bye now. And there's the fan gap cut out. I've got also got, I've made a, a metal frame to go inside here to reinforce it as well. So, that is now coming very close to completion. I'm just going to have to clean this out and then try the fan on and see how it fits. Okay, I'll bring you back when the fan's on. And there it is folks. Fan on. With a piece of board held over the back, it's running and it's remarkably quiet, which is what I hoped for. Apart from the roaring wind in here, 
Right, well I think I've had enough for today, it's 4.30 and uh, I think it's time to go home but I've done well today, we've done well, we've cracked the job, we've cracked the job, all we need tomorrow is a closing plate for here and that's job done, so we'll have to see how that goes, I might make a, I might make a piece that curves round rather than just a square and then I can curve this one like that curve this I'm saying it curve this round like that so that it curves round and forces the air straight through the heat exchanger but there we go right that's Monday done and that's the heat exchanger almost done I'll see you all tomorrow bye now well good morning folks, or should I say good dinner time. It's uh, it's just gone one o'clock, I think. Yes, yeah, just gone one o'clock. And uh, I've, I've been shopping this morning, so I haven't actually done my uh, five days in the workshop already, and it's only Tuesday. Right, obligatory tidy up. Getting ready to, uh, getting ready to finish that. Sweep up. Just going to have a quick look at this uh, linear actuator to see if it is savable or not because there, there's no chance of us getting another one. Uh, and then I'm going to be on with that. So I'll finish this sweeping up and I'll bring you back. Oh look, another pressure washer. The wife's dad was booting this out. It's got a dodgy, uh, a dodgy pipe on it which may be repairable. Uh, but other than that, it's damn good pressure washer. It's a big carcher. So what will happen is that this one will stay here and that smaller one over there will go to uh, to Driffield for doing our yard in Driffield. Uh, right, I'm getting a bit cluttered, <coughs> which is why I'm having a tidy up. That's firewood. That's the famous hunter stove. That's the flue for the hunter stove. This is all the stuff I've moved out of the uh, out of the blacksmith shop. I've got my other sack barrow back. John had that as well. So I've got that back. I'm having a turf out. I also got this very useful, but should I really have got it? Tray. <laughs> I'm getting bummed at this stuff. Never mind. Right. Onward. I'll bring you back in a bit if I'm doing anything interesting whatsoever. Just shows you folks how it pays to go back to things. And how you should always, always never, always never assume that it's something complicated. Right? Never assume that the answer to a complex problem in a piece of complex equipment is complex. Look at this. That is a little tiny plug-in fuse that goes in there and it's blown. Right, one amp plug-in fuse, it actually looks the same as those that are fitted in that uh, in that monitor, but I don't know if they're one amp or not. They're, this is a black one, they were red ones, so I assume they're a different value and it's blown. There's your problem. Right, that's why it was all dead, because the bloody main fuse is blown. This is a 240 volt fuse that divides the power feed from the motor feed so there you go so the next thing we need to do is get one of those or link it with a piece of one amp fuse wire which would be naughty because I haven't got any one amp fuse wire and I'd have to use five amp but there you go we found the fault always always test the basic stuff because usually these circuit boards and these components are quite reliable. Right, there we go, we've found the problem. Bye now. Right folks, we've got the plumbing made for the input side. So next, uh, cutting a piece of tin to fit in a nice curve from there down to there. Going to be a bit awkward fitting it round those, but I'll do it. Never mind. Right, onward. And there we go folks, we've got this curved piece going in that's shaping up. I can actually fit that edge 
to there. And if I fit that edge to there, which is a very strong steel edge, I can run the pipes underneath. Right, and uh, that saves all the hassle of cutting them through here. Right, so that's what I'm going to do because that doesn't need to have air blowing through it anyway. This is the bit that the air needs to go through, and that's a very hard steel edge. So I'll just get that. I'll just get it through there. Lovely jubbling, and it's almost curved. It's almost a curve, but I can make it better. Right, on we go. I finished bolting the. I bolted the fan on as well. I went all on the fan and put all the fan bolts in, so that's all. Fixed now, so we're coming on to what's been, been done, thank goodness. Right, bye now. Right, folks, thanks to the unfeasibly long obstruction mole grips, I've got it in position. So I can drill through there, I can drill through there, I can put a self tapper in for now, but a pop rivet probably later. And once I've got that position fixed, with it underlapping that, I can curve it up <coughs> and uh, and mark the uh, the metal where it can come off. So there we go. This means I'll be able to attach the uh, attach the pipes underneath afterwards, which will be damn good. Right, the witching hour has arrived. So. I'm going home because I live there. So, I'll see you all tomorrow for Wednesday's fun and games. The weather has improved somewhat, which means if it's bright and sunny... Oh, oh I'm saying it's improved somewhat. Looks a bit grey. <laughs> I've got a poo run to do with Keith this week, sometime. So, it could be tomorrow. And it's a big one, it's a huge massive one because Keith's been ill and he's just got better again. So uh, that's what I'll be doing maybe tomorrow, maybe someday this week. See you all later folks, bye now. Wednesday folks, 3.28. I've forgotten to get the bloody camera out, haven't I? But I'm just stitching it together. I'm just going around Pop River and all the joints shut. We are there. I've got that curve cut off, I've made this piece, I haven't, I haven't finished riveting it down there yet, but that's that's next job. And then just rivet this end piece in, I've sealed, I've sealed it all up in there as you can probably see. It's sealed around and it belts the, uh, it really belts the air through it. Mounted that on there, so that's all sorted now. And we're about there, so I'm going to be really boring now and put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and bloody hundreds of pop rivets in. So there you go. Oh and the uh, the water connections are actually under there. They actually come out outside and on top of the uh, of the box so that's really good. That that really is <coughs> much better than just having the pipes poking out. Right I'll get these pop rivets banged in and I'll show you when it's finished. And there it is folks, an ugly thing, but my very own. Happily, it all works. In fact, I've got, yes, there's me, even down to me, my temperature gauge, which will go on there like that. So there we are. All I have to do now is just uh, go around with the silver tape and tape all the joints just to make sure it's sealed up but it's uh, once it's hung on the ceiling you won't notice how higgledy-piggledy it is there you are that's how higgledy-piggledy it is there's my water connections at the top which is going to be a lot easier than having to come out through the metal and seal it right so I've got just two connections there they'll go straight out and down through the wall. I've actually made some pieces of pipe up but they're probably far too long now which doesn't matter because I use them anyway. But there we go. And uh, it even works. And it's very quiet. Open that and the wind comes blasting out of here. And out of there. 
So let's hope it works after all this hassle. But there you go. If you can't struggle a bit. There it is. Right. I'm reasonably happy with that. That works nicely. Lovely. Right. It's nearly time to go home. But before I do, I'm going to lift that down and tidy the bench down. So I'll see you in a bit. There you are folks, that view probably makes a lot more sense. There it is, sitting on the bucket, in the position that it will be fitted in. <coughs> With its thermostat and its bleed screw and its bleed automatic bleed valve on the top. So there we go. Oh joy, it's finished. And now I can get on with the rest of it, which should be comparatively easy. Right. I'll see you all tomorrow. Or I might just pop another bit in when I've tidied up. Because God, we're in a mess again. Ah. Oh. That's a bit better, folks. See you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Thursday, and what have we here? We have some market hooks. As any market trader will know, these hook over the frame of your market stall for hanging stuff on. But if I weld those, I've got six of them. If I weld those together and slice these back pieces off, I will have, with a a bit of an addition on there I will have some metal racks and seeing as they aren't any use for anything else that's what I'm going to do with them I'm taking a break from heating today because if I get the metal racks up I can get rid of this bench which me, gives me access to get the hunter stove through that gap which it probably won't go through at the moment but there you go, so that's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to get the old plasma cut out and uh, see if I can slice those bits off with it. So let's give it a go. And there we are folks, after an hour of furious bodging, we have metal racks. Now then, we're going to weld some extensions onto there obviously, to give us a bit more capacity, and then Three holes and up on the wall. Don't know where yet. But that's what's going to happen. But I've just had the call from Keith. The dog food has arrived and so it's wheelbarrow time. Luckily, the weather has taken a turn for the sunny better and it's stopped raining. There you go. Right. See you in a bit. Bye now. And there we are, folks. Two metal racks, of course there could be more. I have plenty of bits and pieces of scrap steel that can uh, be made into more, but they'll do for a start. Right, let's get them on the wall. And so the first hole is drilled. But it's not Thursday anymore, it's Friday. Because when I came round this corner and went to look for my box of wall plugs over there on the shelves, it wasn't there because some time ago I took it to Driffield and that's where it was and so I couldn't carry on so I packed in yesterday I'm back this morning early it's 11 minutes past 9 and I'm going to get those racks put up before I go to Keith's if I go to Keith's right, because once again it has rained quite heavily this morning And it looks from the clouds that it might well do it again. There you go, rain every day this week. So, I've had the deafening heater on for five minutes just to take the chill off the place. Uh, and I'm going to get those racks banged up. So, when I'm on with it, I'll let you know. Bye now. Well there's a surprise, you would have never guessed it. Ten minutes later, it's pissing down. Oh dear, when will spring ever start? 
And there we go folks. After a massive sort out to find just six screws of the right size, they're up. So let's load them up and see if we can't rip them out of the wall. Bye now. And there it is folks. Not fully loaded yet, but uh, I don't want to put much more on it. Because I'm obviously going to put other racks in other places. Uh, although I don't really want to put any racks underneath that one. I'd rather put them high up on the wall. And have to use a pair of steps to get to them. It is normal to make these racks either freestanding or at least going all the way to the floor. So that most of the weight goes onto the floor and the screws just all the way back to the wall. But you know me for pushing the envelope. So we will so we'll leave that loaded with that one. There's a hell of a lot of weight on there. This metal strip on the bottom is very heavy. But all the screws are in shear. And uh, I, doubt, <laughs> I doubt they'll shear. You're talking many tons to shear a screw like that. So we've got that wall at the end there. Which could have potentially a couple of little racks on it. And then we've got this wall here. Beneath which is the bench which I am scrapping. Now I want to put some grinders on that wall. Uh, I probably get... I've got one, two, I'd probably get them all on there easily on that wall. Uh, so that's where they might end up going. Because these two I don't really use. Although if they were set up and ready to go I probably would use them. That's a very nice small grinder. <coughs> which has got covered in shit. It's, a, it's an old Makita. It's a 1970s Makita. And it wants two decent wheels putting on it. And... Uh, bringing into use because it's very nice for sharpening small stuff right then of course I've got my wire wheel but they'll all go on a plank on there anyway I've had the call from Keith to go up to do this poo run because it's stopped raining near enough to get it done and he's got some he's actually got some uh, some wide thick planking up there that would just make a grinder shelf so I might tap him up for it Right, what a bloody mess I've made. Don't I always make more mess than I tidy up? Right, see you later. Right, folks. All the gong is farmed. And if you don't know what a gong farmer is, look it up on YouTube, on, not YouTube, on Google. That'll tell you what a gong farmer is. That's what I've been doing. We've done two poo runs. Two full trailer loads at a ton apiece. So, job's done for months now. So, we've got the racks up. We've got all the stuff, metal on the racks. Monday's job will be to tidy this mess up. Finish getting the metal out. Probably make some more racks with those two pieces of grey tube, which are also uh, market rails. Uh, I'll bring you back. Right, now that's shut down. I've got these here. Which are also market stall rails. Right, now then, we could put a rack there. Underneath those lin bins. We could put another rack, which is where I think I'm going to do it. Up here. Which is, I think, the best place for it. I'll have to make sure that the gap where the pipes come through is in a, is not blocked. But that stores metal out of the way far better than cramming it all under this bench because you can't see what you've got. Of course, the perennial problem is all the short pieces. Uh, and the short pieces are what I use most of. So I'm going to work some out, but that's all going to be next week. So... While I was up at Keith's, found some timber that we can use for grinder shelves. There's one piece. Here's a long piece. And this looks to me to be just about the right size. Just a moment. And there we are, folks. That's the sort of thing I'm thinking of. A long, narrow shelf. That is not really quite wide enough. But if I put, put a piece of inch by two along the back of it it will be and I've got plenty of that 
so that can be made to fit but I've got one two a three a four and if I include the little linisher five and the little linisher will be best fitted at one end because it has both the linisher and the side sander on it so we could put possibly three on there and two on there so that's a project for next however the time has come the wall has said all of this of course is down to getting that bloody bench out and sawing it up for firewood the time has come the wall has said to speak of many things of sorting out junk this is all the junk I had to sort through to find the screws to fix that thing on the wall right thank you all for watching it's finished thank you all for watching send me some likes if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe because I'm still getting 70 or 80 percent of people who view the video are not subscribers click that button ring that bell and it'll make me so happy right I'll see you all next week bye now